Hey everyone and welcome back and I've decided to take a little break from the uh, the sensor kit I've been working through. If you've been following my videos you may have noticed that I have a certain setup that I use to keep my code organized and myself sane with all these Raspberry Pis I have flying around. So in this video I'm going to go over my setup of Visual Studio Code that I use and, and how I use it to sync up my code from my uh, Windows PC to my Raspberry Pis. Now I've been developing on Windows for a, a long time, uh, 20, 20 years or so, and I've been using Visual Studio since uh, it came out, VB6 before that. Uh, I'm old, right? So um, I, I really love Visual Studio Code and, and what they've done. Um, I can tell you Visual Studio has just gotten so chunky over the years, like it has so much that you don't need. And uh, development has evolved, right? It's it's a lot doing a lot on the front end and all these frameworks that are out these days and and uh, the the tool had to evolve too so I, I'm kind of glad that they kind of took a step back and, and came up with Visual Studio Code. It's more in line with Atom and WebStorm and the other uh, more modern IDEs that are out today. There are a million ways to do things. Um, that's the the challenge with with coding um, but I have found that if you just find one way and it's a lot less painful if you learn someone else's way first and then and then you can kind of branch out and find things that work for you so I'm hoping this video will be helpful in that way so let's get started um, if you go to uh, visualstudio.com uh, um, I'm going to provide the the link in the in the description of the video but uh, download for your environment so you can download for Windows or Linux or Mac I'm going to download for Windows I'm going to right click and show in folder. Okay, I'm going to double click on it and it's a pretty straightforward install. I'm just going to take all the defaults. Okay, once we're done, I'm going to launch Visual Studio code. <laughs> um, Okay, so what we're going to want to do first here is to install Git. Um, it's going to need that to do the FTP sync I want to show you. So I'm um, over here in the Git um, website. Um, I'm going to go to Downloads, and I'm going to download that for Windows. Okay, I'm going to double-click that. Take all the defaults again. Okay. Go back into Visual Studio Code. And one thing that's different than Visual Studio is that instead of having a solution file, um, you, you actually open up a directory like you, you do with some of the other uh, programs out there. So I'm going to open the folder. I have a folder where I keep all my, my Tinkerpie scripts. So I'm going to open that up. And here I have. Uh, all of the the modules and sensors and all of the code that went with those so it kind of keeps them all in the same place and if I bring up a new Raspberry Pi I can just sync it over and then I have everything so it's really really handy okay so next we're going to install the FTP sync extension so if you click on this little square over here you get this uh, search box where you can search through all the extensions and here I have typed in FTP uh, we're going to download this uh, FTP Sync plugin. Okay, it looks like it's installed. Um, I found it's best to exit out of the program and go back in because it doesn't always see um, the extension right away. Okay, 
Okay, it opens up the last uh, directory you are in. And if you click uh, or hit F1, it brings up this little uh, drop down for commands. And so if you type in your command like FTP, it gives you all of the available commands for that extension. So I'm going to select init. And I already have my, uh, my uh, setup here. But the remote path is the directory on your Raspberry Pi, or, or this could be a, a remote server as well. Anything you can FTP to. Uh, so m all of my Pi's have home Pi, Tinker Pi directory. And uh, this is the IP address. Um, you need to find out the IP address of your Pi. Uh, there are a few ways to do that. One is to um, plug it directly into a monitor and keyboard and, and type ifconfig. If you don't have um, that available, I've been other places and didn't have that. So um, there's a so there's a, there's an app for your Android or iPhone called Angry IP Scanner. There's there's a bunch of others too. Uh, so it'll just tell you what IP addresses are available, and a lot of times you can tell uh, which one is is your Raspberry Pi. If you're if you're um, at home or at a friend's house and you can actually log into the router then you can often see what IP addresses are, are available. So uh, I'm going to put in my uh, Pi username and password. The port was defaulted to 21 which is regular FTP. You're going to want to change that to 22 which is secure FTP. The protocol uh, was FTP. You change it to SFTP. Um, if you don't do that it won't work. So uh, those are the only two things that are few things you need to change. Um, once you have that, then you hit F1 again. And then um, we want to sync uh, local to remote. I'm going to uh, push any changes that I've made on my computer over to my Pi. So I'm going to choose this folder, which is the folder that I put in, this, in the config. There are a few options here. Um, a full sync will we'll, um, do a sync both ways if you've, you've made a change. A safe sync means uh, don't remove anything. If you've deleted something on one end and not the other, then it'll it'll keep it. Uh, and a force upload means uh, no matter if anything changed or not, just go ahead and upload everything. So I'm going to do a full sync, and then it tells me uh, how many operations it, it needs to do uh, based on the changes that have been made. So I'm going to say run all 45 operations now and then it will it will start that sync. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to remote into my Raspberry Pi. So to do that I use VNC Viewer and if you don't have that, um, I have another video but it's real easy. You can just go out to this website that I'll, I'll put in the description as well. So I'm going to open uh, VNC And then I have a, a setup here to get to this Pi. It just has the IP address and the, the name. And then when you click on it, it'll ask you for the username and password the first time. Okay, so out here I have home Pi. And here's my Tinker Pi directory. And here is all the code that I just uh, synced over. So there you have it. We uh, set up Visual Studio Code and we installed Git, which uh, the FTP sync needs for some reason, and uh, got the syncing working between uh, the program and the Raspberry Pi. And I think this is head over heels better than the way I used to do it, which is to try to, to use an FTP client to, to keep all that managed and, and it was crazy. So I hope this helps you as much as it's helped me and I will be doing some, some more videos in the future on some more features in Visual Studio Code and also the Raspberry Pi. So please subscribe to my channel and have a great day.